Thank you very much, everybody. I appreciate that. And now, without further ado, I feel like we're having deja vu. It's me, it's Boo, it's Mitch, and we have a couple other awesome people we have along the way. We have Lasso, we have Hacksaws. So here we go. Super Mario Brothers 3, you pay for it, you ask for it. Here we go. Have fun. What's up, everybody? I'm Oglib, here to bring you guys a Super Mario Brothers 3 all forts race. I want to first of all say thank you so much for the huge push you guys made to get this race in. All right, now I will now introduce our racers starting on my left. We have the Haxor. Uh, he comes in with a PB of 46.15. Give it up. Moving on next, we have Lasso42 coming in with a PB of 49.29-ish. Up next, we've got the world record holder of this category, Mitch Flower Power, coming in 45.25 on a PB. And finally, on my right, the people's champ. He's here to stomp out the competition, <laughs> both literally and figuratively. Give it up for Grand Pooh Bear, everybody. Also like to introduce my commentary team. We've got Stewie Cartman, we've got Glitch Cat. Welcome, boys. We're gonna have a great, great race for you guys. As soon as our runners are ready, I will count it down. Everybody good to go? Good, good. All right, let's kick this off in five, four, three, two, one, go! All right, our runners all moving into 1-1 one, one now. This is a category called All Forts. So normally in this game, you won't beat every single fortress on a single uh, warpless run or something like this. So this is a slight route variation uh, that we kind of came up as just a little bit of, of a fun way to do the game differently. It's actually become one of the hottest categories in the entire game. So all of our runners will beat every single fort they see without the map, but that is the only restriction they have. So we're gonna see a lot of different route variations and whatnot uh, for them to achieve that goal. So moving into 1-2 now, you see there's a lot of stuff just on the map. Mario 3 introduces a ton of new mechanics that you haven't seen in Mario 1 or Mario 2. And in order to do that in the really, really short stage uh, length of Mario 3, they kind of just cram everything in. <laughs> and now we're going to see our runners moving into 1-3. So this is one kind of stage variation we see. We, don't, we also see Pooh moving into 1-F. Uh, our runners are going to beat both of these stages, but they're going to do that by collecting the warp whistles that are hidden in both of them. Uh, so this is the only category in the game that collects and uses all three warp whistles. So another really interesting thing you see. Uh, the warp whistle usage, we'll see, might vary based on uh, the runner's routes and maybe some, some different things they have to deal with, but they are going to use all three warp whistles. So now Pooh grabbed the one in 1F, he's going into 1-3. Meanwhile, the rest of the racers are going back into 1-4 just to pick up theirs. So we'll kind of get an uh, idea of who's... Oh, Mitch went for the waffle jump and he missed it. Yeah, that's a very tight, tight jump. If you uh, just barely brush up against that ceiling, it becomes very hard to get. Looks like he's got his mushroom, is nice. grabbing the tail and flying up there. So it looks like Lasso and Pooh pretty much neck and neck here. Pooh, the first one to whistle, but Lasso and... Hacks are not too far behind. Mitch got a little bit of work to do, but this is very early in the race. Anything can happen. There's a ton of worlds left. So now they're moving into World 2. This is kind of a, a different world uh, than you normally see in a Warpless race. A big part of that is that instead of coming in with a Fire Flower, they come in uh, either with a tail or as Big Mario. And normally the Fire Flower helps in a few different spots throughout the world. Uh, but there's no real good place to pick one up outside of the airship itself. So they're going to have to navigate this without any firepower or anything like that. Uh, you did see they were joking a little bit earlier about the cards they're getting. <laughs> uh, Lasso actually had two flower cards. If he had picked up a third one, he'd get this nice little fanfare as the game gave him three up instead of one. Uh, obviously in a speedrun, that's not something you want because you want to go as fast as possible. So our runner's moving through 2-2 two, two now. It looks like Pooh making it across. You basically want to swim as little as possible in this game. If there's any, any way you can skip some swimming, it's great because it's the slowest way to move. So all of our runners getting across that little pond there, moving on. We're moving into 2F now. This is a very, very difficult stage to get, and he just easily nails that early P-speed. That's a very... Casual tough, early P-speed. Very tough strat to nail. You really have to mess with the P-speed mechanics in just a way to get it, and it uh, looks like all of our runners really pulling it off nicely. So 
So I'm curious to see what our runners do in this room. Uh, yeah, we do see Mitch just deciding to take the damage boost there. Gets to that uh, door just a little bit earlier. Uh, normally with the Fire Flower, you want to obviously hang on to that. But if you don't have that, you can kind of use those spikes as an advantage to get over there. So uh, Mitch has very quickly closed the gap on Pooh. But uh, Lasso and Hex are also not far behind as well. Another thing to note, we've been seeing these Hammer Bros moving around on the map. Uh, the first one that they can see is a music box. They're probably not going to pick that one up. It's not very important. The hopefully other they one, won't. yeah, hopefully they won't. The other one though does have a hammer, uh, and that's very important. They need to use that hammer at the end of this world to pick up the third whistle from the Fire Bros. Looks so, like we got Lasso doing the red rockets. Yeah, <laughs> Lasso picked up that red shell, carried it Nails all the it. way through, and you see how fast that shell went through. Saves a little bit of time. A very very difficult strat. <laughs> Shout out to Kujo for doing that strat. Yeah. All right, now moving into the infamous Angry Sun level. This is actually one of the most easy levels to speedrun, though. Uh, the Angry Sun kind of reacts to your own movement. So if you play the level the same way every time, you kind of know when he's going to swoop down and try and get you. And otherwise, this is a very flat stage, very easy just to run all the way through. All right, so it looks like Pooh has got a decision here. He's going to go down to 2-5. Uh, there's kind of a, just a decision you have to make based on your Hammer Bros, where they're located. Looks like uh, Mitch is going to fight this Hammer Brother first. It should have the hammer. Yep. And uh, we see Lasso go into 2-4. The stage difference between the two is pretty close. 2-4 is a slight bit faster, but it also is a bit harder. Uh, but you really just want to go based on where that Hammer Brother is. You want to get the hammer. You want to avoid the music box if you can. Uh, and that's really where the big time save comes from. I believe the difference between 2.4 and 2.5 is roughly a second if yeah, you're in that. It's, it's very, very small. You don't want to have to do a whole bunch of extra map movements just to save one second in that one. So we're never going to get to hear that awesome music box tune? Oh, man. It might, it, it might happen soon. Uh, but we, we see uh, Pooh has just... I was going to talk about the pyramid and how it's a really technical stage and super difficult, and Pooh's he already done it with easy. it. He's, it's already through, and so is Haxor. Uh, we see Mitch and Lasso both picking... Or, sorry. Lasso just picked up the hammer. Mitch just picked up the whistle. Uh, so that's two things that uh, Hexor and Pooh are going to have to go do. So they're kind of... It, it's kind of hard to tell exactly who's in the lead right now because they're all kind of doing a slightly different route in order to get through as fast as they can. We'll get a better idea once they get onto that airship. Mitch with a very solid pyramid as well. Lasso deciding to grab that mushroom there. Uh, it's going to be very important that he picks up a fire flower on Morton's airship. So he decides to pick up a mushroom there uh, in order to make that power up block into a fire flower once he gets up there. All right, looks like Pooh is the first one into the World 2 airship, but Haxor and Mitch right on his tail. Lasso not far behind either. But uh, I feel like I've been talking for the last 25 minutes. So let's <laughs> throw it over to Sky, get some donations in. Thanks, Glib. We have $250 from who else but Mr. Cab. <laughs> Mr. Cab says, good luck on the race, everyone. Watch out for those World Aid hands. Cab, don't look at the first hand, please. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Cab, notorious for uh, sum seemingly summoning the first hand. We'll talk about those as we get to it. Every time, I swear. <laughs> <laughs> I do, I do want to say, though, uh, we, we, I didn't really hype up uh, each of our individual runners, though. So let's hear from the audience. Who's rooting for Hackstar out there? Moving on, who's rooting for Lasso? <laughs> who's rooting for Mitch? All right, all right, all right. Finally, who's rooting up for Pooh Bear out there? All right. We do have a request for Pooh over here. $500 from Reptire's Rage that says, can we get a little bit more shoulder for my boy Pooh? Ooh. <laughs> we, got, we got some good shoulder for Mitch, but I know the people are fan of the Pooh shoulder. So, 250. Pooh going for a fire kill hill on Morton doesn't quite get the fireballs in, but does clean up the kill pretty nicely. Mitch going with just a nice easy jump kill. Haxor pulls Beautiful. off the nice fire kill. That's a very difficult kill to pull off, so very nice job. <laughs> Pooh mentioning he was very close to actually shooting at the wrong time, which could have caused the soft lock. Uh, occasionally, if you just shoot that last fireball on the, uh, the Koopa Kid at the, la at the wrong time, uh, the Koopa Kid will just kind of fall off the stage and just won't appear. Uh, and since you've killed the Koopa, the timer doesn't 
continue to run. So there's literally nothing you can do. You're actually just stuck, and you have to uh, basically your runs in completely dead. You have to turn the console off. But uh, luckily, able to avoid that. I've never done that stop lock before. I don't know what you're talking I've about. I've done it. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's a rough one. <laughs> All right, moving into three one here. Uh, this is another stage where you want to swim as little as possible, so going over the top there, trying to preserve this P-Speed inside the water in order to get through as quickly as possible. But we're coming up on 3-2, one of the most technical stages in the entire run. Uh, the the P-Speed build at the very beginning is uh, very, very particular. You have to really have really precise movement to get it correctly. And then after you get it, if you get it, uh, you have to deal with some really sketchy hitboxes in order to preserve it. So we see Pooh kind of hanging out on the left for a second to hopefully build this speed. Does get it. And now let's see if these uh, fish cooperate. Nice. They did very nice. Meanwhile, Mitch also able to pull it off. Very nice. Haxler didn't quite get the PSP, but does uh, get through the stage. And another thing to watch out for, uh, these Hammer Bros on the, on the map, you see them moving up. Uh, the route that these runners are going to take is going to really depend on how these Hammer Brothers move. One of them has a hammer uh, that they're going to want to pick up. The other one has a star, which they may or may not use. Uh, and it's really going to depend on, on how quickly they can grab that, at, uh, that music, or that uh, star. Hey, Glenn. What's up? You think anybody's going for third door? Listen, I, there's, been, there's been talks of third door. I know my boy Pooh won't let me down. He's going to go for it. This is a nice one-frame trick on, he's going to do. He's the first one, and he has to go for it. He told me he would. What? What? Unreal. Oh, come, come on. on. All right, so you can actually enter that third door in the line here, and if you get right back in in one frame, you go straight to the Boomba Room, skip that middle section. Uh, but if you miss it, you fall into the water, and you have to, you have to take a, a few extra seconds to swim back up and give it another try. See, Mitch and Haxor also skipping it. Really unfortunate. You hate to see it. Well, will, on, Lasso, Lasso. will Lasso save us? Oh, nice clip there. <laughs> what a game. All right, Lasso's going for it. Oh, he gets it! What a save! Such an easy trick. <laughs> Worth it. Love the pop off. I think that settles it. Lasso wins this race. I'm sorry. Like, that's quite the trick. Free trick. Free trick. I like that bravery. <laughs> the race is over. Everybody can just stop. Lasso wins. We're done. All right, so now Pooh is using a cloud here, going over into 3.7. He's actually going to pick up another one here. Uh, this is another thing you really don't see anywhere else but all forts, uh, the usage of this cloud in order to skip another stage coming up. So I, I was talking a little bit about the, uh, the way these bridges are lined up. So we're going to see Pooh go straight down into 3.8. The bridges were set up in such a way where he could do that. He's going to go back around to go do 3.F2 after that. So this is kind of one of those things. You have to be really ready to be right on your toes and do exactly the fastest route that's being presented to you uh, in order to get through as quickly as possible. So it's, it's a really fun category in that respect where it's just every run's different. So we see Haxor also picking up the cloud and the coin heaven. Lasso about to grab it as well. But uh, 3F2, we see Pooh moving through it. This is the one swimming fort. Uh, of the entire run. This is kind of a kind of a neat fort, though, actually. It, it's swimming, but uh, there's actually a lot of little imper little uh, optimizations and whatnot you can do, so. Glib. What's up? How much time did Lasso save by doing third door? Okay, everybody's going to tell you Lasso saved like six seconds or something. I'm going to tell you right now, he saved five years by getting that third door. <laughs> He's literally gone back into the past and is now doing the run from 2014. Well, this so Lasso worked so hard to save all this time, okay? Now, I know this is one of Lasso's friends, $25 from Alvarian that says, Lasso is one of my best friends, so I have to donate $25 during his SMV3 race. I also have to root against him, though, Ooh. so he gets an extra $10 for each hand he gets. Lasso just saved all of six <laughs> seconds, and now we're wishing hands on him? <laughs> With friends like that. Now, since Haxor, Lasso, and Puga had to go to 3-7, they're not going to be skipping 4-4. Four, four. Right, yeah, that's where we'll see that kind of route variation happen. Mitch will have to go through 4-4 four, four once he gets there, uh, whereas Haxor 
Lost Hope and Pooh will all be able to skip over it. 4-4 is uh, the stage that's kind of left over in the route as being the slowest stage. A lot of times you'll skip past some fortresses because they're normally long stages, but this is all forts. We have to do all of them. And I didn't see, did Haxor do uh, 3-F2? He missed it in the hotfix race. I want to make sure that he I got it. I hope he played it. <laughs> we'll take a look at his map once he gets out of 3-9 here. Are these different routes just a matter of preference? Or? There's a slight bit of preference, and a lot of it is just kind of reacting on what the game's throwing at you. So uh, uh. How, the, how the Hammer Brothers move, or, or just uh, or perhaps your own preference, what you're comfortable with in strats. Uh, and there's actually a really big route variation, I think we'll, yeah, we he, will he see. Yeah, he played the fort. Okay. He got the fort. We're okay. <laughs> oh, this isn't the category some forts? No, it's actually <laughs> all forts. Oh. Yeah. It's wild. We see Mitch and Pooh working their way through the World 3 airship, coming in with fire. We also saw Lasso kind of take a little bit of a side trip to go pick one up in 3-9. Uh, very important to have Fire Flower for the Wendy kill. She's one of the kills that's most difficult to do as a jump, but actually can be uh, one of the easiest to fire kill because it's a nice flat plane you can kill her with. So uh, it's one of those ones where if you come in with fire, it's, it's much easier, much safer, much faster. So it's something you definitely want to do. And I saw on Lasso's screen he had a coin ship. What was yep. that about? It, oh, all right. <laughs> we can talk about coin chips in a little bit here and, and kind of what that is and, and what that entails. But we see Mitch moving into the fight. Very nice, very clean kill. And he's out of World 3. <laughs> Stewie, why didn't Mitch jump for the wand? Isn't that faster? It can be, <laughs> if you're at the very top of the screen. <laughs> if you grab the wand at the very top of the screen by wall jumping, the game will think that you're actually at the very bottom of the screen and you'll skip the falling animation completely. Right, otherwise the wand will fall just a little bit faster than Mario right. does, so that's why you're seeing our runners just wait for it to be grabbed. It's absolutely the most common uh, Twitch chat question you see in any SMV3 stream is, is somebody going, well, why aren't that, like, they should jump for it? That's quicker. It, it's all swag. That's all it is. That's also, yeah, it's mad swag. All right, moving into World 4 here. This is a lot of people's favorite worlds. Uh, just the aesthetic of it. Also has a lot of really interesting speed stages, lots of fun stuff. Also having a little trouble cleaning up this Wendy fight. She's got a really particular hitbox, but he is able to get it. And even though the Wendy fight looks easy with fire, without fire, it is probably the hardest boss to kill. Oh yeah, absolutely. So Pooh able to get the P-Speed in 4-1 as well. 4-2, another stage that features kind of a really interesting strat there. You see Mitch picked up that, uh, that ice block and also shot a fireball in order to despawn one of the piranha plants and then carry the ice block through the end for the rest of it. All right, now Mitch is about to move into 4-3. This is uh, definitely a, a favorite stage. I, I asked all the runners uh, what their favorite stage was. I know Pooh mentioned that 4-3 was his favorite, uh, but this is a lot of people's. My own, it's my own personal favorite as well. It's my favorite. It's such a really fun stage to do. There's so many enemies and that, not that just kind of line up, and it's just a really fun stage when it goes all together great. You get nice little crouch jumps at the end. Really nice stage there from Mitch. Let's see if Pooh can match. Now coming up for Mitch, he's going to have to do 4-4, four, four, and there is recently a new test strat for 4-4. Four, four. Right. Let's see if Mitch goes for it. After the fort. Yeah, but first we have the fort here. It's going to be interesting to see Mitch having a lot of movements from those Hammer Brothers there, having to wait that out. But moving into the fort, you see he doesn't use a star here. I'm not sure if any of the runners are going to. Uh, star usage is actually pretty important. You don't have a lot to work with, but that was a, that very, a very difficult, beautiful fort. fort from Mitch, especially to do it without a star. That was great. I think that, was a, <laughs> that is a tough, <laughs> tough stage. And as soon as anything goes wrong, you're just in instant panic mode. Oh, you see, yeah, Pooh couldn't uh, quite get that crouch underneath, does lose his fire. Oh, no. Going small. Haxor able to pull off the really tricky jump. Let's see if he can get past the thwomp. He does. Very nice fork from Haxor there. So now you see Mitch doing 4-4. Now, at the beginning, when you build your P-Speed, if you do a duck after you build your P-Speed and you do the duck jump into the water, you'll actually shoot back out, out of the water and you have a few frames to shoot the Lakitu and the spike. 
Yeah, that was a strat recently found by a Tasser by the name of Maru. Uh, saves about a second, which is pretty nice. I mean, one second less of 4-4 is really good. Any any less time you can spend there, the better. It, it's my personal least favorite level. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, we, but meanwhile, we see Pooh, Haxor, and Lasso are all going to be clouding over that stage. So that's, that's where that 3-7 cloud will come into handy for them. Lasso had a lot of height coming off of that. He's got a tricky jump around Oof. the hot foot, able to avoid it. Meanwhile, we see our other three runners taking care of some uh, Hammer Bros. The Hammer Bros at the second half of the world, one of them has a P-Wing, the other has a Star. Uh, the P-Wing is going to be very, very important that they pick it up. Uh, otherwise, they might have to do some little extra tricks uh, later on in the run. But uh, grabbing that P-Wing does save quite a bit of time. We see Mitch actually going through 4-5. I believe he did that because of how the Hammer Bros were set up. Uh, we Looks see... Like who wrapping up 4-6, so they will be heading into that fortress about the same time. Haxor, actually Haxor is the first one in, so very nice. He's have a very clean World 4 so far. Picking up that early P speed in 4F2, that's another one of those. You have to be really, really precise, have a lot of knowledge of how the P meter works in order to get that. It looks easy, but it's not. Yeah. <laughs> Very solid World 4, and we're not going to go to the World 4 airship. I'm sorry, everybody, who's going to miss out on two minutes of super slow auto-scrolling. Everybody's but, favorite airship. Yeah. <laughs> but it's another one of those spots where you can actually take the warp whistle over to the next world and just keep going on and skip a very long auto-scroller. Uh, the entirety of this run is about five minutes to six minutes faster than a warpless run, and that's one of the big moments is, is there's a lot of auto-scrolling skip that you normally have to do. So the castles don't technically count as forts. Correct. We're just finishing off the fortresses. So Haxor moving into 5-2 now. This is a level that uh, has the infamous Pit of Despair. He's going to try to take this top route into this pipe. Looks like he's going to get it. Mitch, right behind him, also going to make nice. it. Uh, if you fall down and miss that top pipe, you have to fall down a very long ways, very unfortunate fall. And it actually comes into a very, very difficult section compared to this top spot. So it's a really massive time loss if, you, if that does happen to you. Luckily, all of our runners so far able to avoid it. How much time does that waste if you fall in the pit? I want to say it's like 20 seconds or something. It, it's, it's really bad. Uh, Kujo IHSV, another really talented runner, actually routed out a P-Speed strat for the bottom of that stage and was just like, it's so slow, just if, if you fall down in there, just take a death. Like that, that's how slow it is, is that you might as well just take the death. All right, so now moving into 5F2. This is Lasso's favorite stage. Another one of those stages where things kind of just line up. You get to do some fun little dodges between the atomic waffles and uh, just really use your P-Speed in a really, really fun way. But it looks like Pooh is the first one out of the fortress. I think La uh, Haxor has done a Hammer Bro fight. So that's so. gonna it's gonna kind of change here. We'll see who's the kind of the first one into the tower. This is another group of Hammer Bros where one has a P-wing, the other has a star. So we see Haxor actually putting that bro to sleep, moving straight into the tower. I think that was the P-wing he got. I didn't see it. Okay, so that'll 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 make a difference a little bit later. Mitch also moving into the tower as well. This is another stage. It's very very technical. There's a lot of pipes you go up, and every single pipe transition is a little different on how you want to handle it to keep your P-speed. So you have to do slightly different movement every single time in order to preserve it. It looks like Haxor able to keep his throughout. Mitch also doing the same. Pooh also keeping it so far. Oh, it does lose it there. It hit that block. That's just one of those things you have to deal with sometimes. It's very difficult to keep P-Speed throughout the whole level. Yeah. Oh, and Pooh also taking a hit from the Swamp. It looks like he's going to make it out up into the sky now. Now, normally in Warpless and World 5, we'd want that music box. Here, we don't need it. We have no use of it. Right, yeah. So you, what you might see later is these uh, guys using a music box to put the music box to sleep so they don't have to fight it. Put the music box to sleep? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so the top of World 5, none of the stages are all that difficult, but they are extremely punishing. Since they're all up in the sky, most mistakes will just lead in, in falling down a pit and dying immediately. So this is kind of one of those sections that's not too difficult, but if you do make a mistake, you really have to pay attention to what's going on. Otherwise, you can take a death and lose even more time. Looks like Mitch got the early P-Speed in 5-5. That's a very, it's another really tough strat. Very nicely done. 
Uh, Pooh will have a chance to pick up a Fire Flower coming up in 5-7, so he'll be able to get his fire back there. Uh, looks like Mitch deciding just to fight the bro here. Meanwhile, Haxor moving through 5-7, unable to get that early P-Speed, but uh, is going to have to just hop through. Pooh does put that music box to sleep. Oh, we see a death oh, from Lasso in 5-4. No. Very, very tough stage. So Haxor, the first one out of 5-7. He's got that bro on the bottom there. He's Go probably... The <laughs> there is a clip you can do in 5-F2. Uh, you get one chance at it, other than you, otherwise you die. So it's called the Kamikaze Clip. Uh, but you can actually clip into that top corner, and it scrolls you very long time all the way across and eventually to the Boom Boom fight. So it does save about four or five seconds if you do get it, but uh, if you mess it up, you die. You don't have any recovery options or any, any backups. So uh, not something you're going to see unless somebody's really trying to either save or kill their run. Was there an incentive for that? <laughs> <laughs> Wassel's looking over at me. Is he going to do this? <laughs> I think he's going to. He's, he's thinking about it. I know he's thinking about it. I mean, he went for door three. He got third door. <laughs> Haxler cleaning up 5-8. Mitch right behind him as well. That's a, another one of those stages where uh, you got a little bit of a tricky jump at the end, but otherwise pretty straightforward. And we'll see Haxor uh, clouding over the worst stage in the game, 5-9. And he's going to fight this uh, music pro as well. So it looks like Mitch, the first one into the World 5 airship. Uh, but uh, Pooh and Haxor are going to be not too far behind. Lasso a couple stages back. Uh, but he actually might take a slight route variation here uh, and actually use his left. Oh, oh, he went for the clip. He went for it. I respect it. I respect it. Great. <laughs> so we might see a route variation here. Uh, Lasso very often likes to use his last whistle here in World 5 and go straight to World 6 uh, once he finishes up the sport. Uh, he won't have that whistle for World 7, uh, which is where the other runners will be using it. So we might get a slight little, uh, might be quite not sure who's in the lead for a little bit. We'll see what Lasso decides to go for. He, he might decide to just go for the World 5 uh, airship. Hey, do we have time for a few donations? Absolutely. Throw, throw one or two in. I will say Lasso is a favorite so far from what I am seeing. We have $50 from XPog who says, here's $50 in honor of Lasso getting third door. $50 <laughs> from Javim. Haxor and Mitch are two of my best friends, but Lasso got third door, so I'm starting to question my loyalty and who to vote for. <laughs> Much love, Jem. And then another friend here. We have $25 from Zebra Cakes, who says, good luck to all the runners. We'll donate an extra $25 if Haxor gets first-handed. An extra $25 if runners can come up with five words that rhyme with Mario. Maybe something to do on an airship while waiting. Oh, man. I don't even know Ooh. five words in general, much less ones that rhyme with Mario. <laughs> Mitch, the first one out of World 5, but Haxor and Pooh right behind him. And we did see Lasso use that whistle, so he's going to be the first one into 6F1. Uh, but later on in World 7, he's going to have to play some stages that the rest of our runners are going to be able to skip. So unfortunately, Lasso uh, is going to have to take the magic carpet ride here in 6F1. Can't use his uh, power-ups to take some invincibility frame boosts across the spikes. Uh, but he's going to be going for something pretty fun here. He's going to pick up the star and try to carry it all the way to the end of the stage. Everybody say hi, Boom Boom. Everybody say bye, Boom Boom. <laughs> and the upside down question orb. <laughs> what kind of question is that? So that has to do with uh, uh, one interesting mechanic of Boom Boom is he actually has 27 health, uh, but he, he will die at a certain health point. But the star actually takes the damage out of him so quickly that it goes all the way to zero. And when Boom Boom's health reaches zero, he instantly blows up and spawns that upside down orb. We might actually get to see that a little bit later on in the run. I will talk about it when we get there. Uh, but normally, uh, the star kill is the only way to do this. So we see Mitch and Haxor also pulling off the real quick kill. Uh, and who was <laughs> right far, right behind them. Uh, Lasso in the meanwhile in 6-5. This is kind of one of the first puzzle stages of the game. Uh, the game wants you to pick up a, uh, pick up a tail at some nice. point and carry uh, that Koopa up to kill both of those, uh, 
nippers up there, but actually by doing some precise movement, Lasso was able to despawn one of those nippers uh, and get up there without using the Koopa shell. So now Lasso gonna have to deal with these bros here. If he's been watching them carefully, he'll know which one has the cloud and which one has the star. Uh, I actually do want to shout out, it was actually a uh, viewer of Mitch's stream who noticed one time that, uh, hey, the cloud always seems to face the same way at the end of a stage and the star faces another. And this is something, people have been running this game for how many years and nobody had even thought of it, nobody had noticed it. And uh, people looked into the code and said, oh yeah, you can actually figure out which bro is which just by where they're facing. Uh, so it goes to show you that everybody can contribute to speedrunning in any way. So uh, really cool that we found that out that's actually helped out a lot in a, in a lot of different categories, including this one. Leave it to Twitch chat. <laughs> Classic how, Twitch chat. How long ago was that discovered? About a year ago? Yeah, I think it's about a year, year and a half now that it's been discovered. So it was very, very recent uh, in, in comparison to how long this game's been, been run. So really cool stuff. Ooh, we see Pooh taking a hit there, does lose his tail. That is going to cost him as this uh, fortress here, uh, we see Mitch and the Haxor moving through it. Very important to have really solid flying mechanics to get through it uh, and, and get past these uh, spots really quickly. Lasso in the meanwhile, wrapping up 6-8, got the big H jump, maintaining his, uh, his pseudo lead so far. And does, he'll be does he do 6-10? Uh, yes, so this okay. is another route variation we're going to see. We're going to see Lasso go into 610, uh, pick up the Fire Flower, and use that at the beginning of the World 7. The rest of our runners here are going to actually be going into 69, uh, which is normally a stage you use in a P-Wing. Unfortunately, we don't really have a lot of P-Wings to use, so we're going to have to use some uh, fancy mechanics in order to get through it. But we'll see, uh, we'll see our runners get there. We see uh, Haxor and Mitch both taking some intentional damage there. Being small is very important for this trick. So they're going to try to hit a specific pixel vertically, and then they have one frame to jump again. This is actually something Nintendo Power knew about. If you read the official Nintendo Power strategy guide, there is a part about this. And Mitch gets nice. it first try. Very nice. He read Nintendo nice. Power. Nice score gets it first try as well. These guys have the lifetime Nintendo Power subscription, I guess. <laughs> Holy moly. Unreal. Come on, Poo. Let's see if Poo can match. Oh, oh he, he hit, hit the, the pixel. He you hit can it. see that little stutter. That means he got it. Oh, he's getting it. He's just got to get that one frame. Ooh. It's a very tough jump. Yeah, very, very tough. There it nice. is. All right. Very nice. So you saw uh, Lasso able to save just a little bit of time in this fortress with that Fire Flower. I uh, was able to use that to kill the Boom Boom. That's the fastest way to kill them other than using some sort of overkill method. Uh, is just to use five Fireballs instead of three jumps. So he is the first one onto the World 6 airship. And uh, I think we got some time for a couple donations, Sky, if you want to take it away. I mean, the love for Lasso really doesn't stop here. We have $25 from M Dodge that says, rooting for Lasso now, respect the oh, door. <laughs> All right, Lasso's got a very tough jump here. Let's see if he can pull this off. This is one really tricky part. Oh, no. Oh, oh he's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, what? <laughs> with every year, you fool less and less people with that. <laughs> I fool enough. Oh, and he oh, gets nice. the clip. Lasso can sit back, let the video game play itself for the next 15 seconds. <laughs> that saves no time at all. That saves just absolutely no time, but it's so nice. Now, if you do that clip too early, you can actually squish into get squished by the screen and die. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, we just saw Haxor do it as well. There's a little tiny platform underneath that you can't see on screen. Uh, so it's always a fun little trick to play on people who haven't seen the game before. But uh, go ahead and read another donation or two, Sky. We got time. We have $25 from Raccoon Dog. No comment, but thank you very much for your donation. Oh, thanks, Raccoon Dog. Oh, nice fire kill. Very nice fire kill from Lasso there. Now coming up, Lasso is going to be approaching every runner's favorite level of this game. <laughs> is it? <laughs> yeah, we're coming I mean, up. It could be. We're coming up. Uh, you saw that clip Lasso did. That's going to actually be a, something that does save a lot of time here in 7-1. Uh, he's going to try to do the exact same thing, just get himself stuck. And uh, the game will push Mario to the right to try and get him unstuck. Well, luckily for us, that means Lasso is going to get pushed all the way past the entrance of the stage and the in part of it, and he'll be right at the end. Uh, this is a sub-pixel dependent uh, strat. So 
you may be able to do everything right, and the values that you just can't tell uh, just aren't quite right. So uh, you don't get it. That might have that might have looked. Like yes, it was. Uh, unfortunately, no macaroni and cheese for Lasso, so now he's just got to kind of jump at this door and pray. Gets in fourth try. That's pretty good. That's pretty good, yeah. I think everybody will take a fourth try. So if he gets it right, he will have left the level? Just I mean, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> I do have a quick uh, message for Hackster here. $5 from Suraya. So glad to have this amazingly entertaining race at SGDK once again. Good luck to all uh. the runners. Here's hoping for as few hands as possible. Mitch, take hammer speed all the way. Hacks, don't enter 7-1. Did Mitch just get first try? Mitch just got the macaroni and cheese. Hacks are also pulling it off. I believe it's a fifth or sixth try, so pretty good as well. Uh, definitely better than 50th try. All right, let's see what Pooh does with 7-1. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So this is a, a slight route variation that you see. You saw Lasso actually used his Fire Flower in order to take damage boost, whereas uh, the rest of the runners are going to use a Star in order to take out that first nipper, because uh, you want to have P-Speed to clear that gap uh, so that you don't have to go down and hit all the music block notes to get back up and around. So looks like uh, Haxor and Mitch both able to pull it off as well. How much time does that waste and if Poo you miss And does the... get in, has a little trouble, but uh, it, it, it's one of those things where sometimes you can do everything right and the game just says no, so... It, How much it, time does that waste if you miss the? Uh, I gap think it's about 15 seconds or something like that because you have to go down a pipe, swim around, go back up a pipe, hit the blocks, swim back around. It, like it's it's a really long. It's another one of those things where it's like it's almost better just to take a death if you miss it. Uh, but seven three, really easy stage. Nobody has ever died on this stage ever never. in a GDQ run. It's never happened. I don't want to hear anything else <laughs> about this stage. <laughs> but uh, yeah, this is another stage. Pretty straightforward. If you know what you're doing, you can kind of get through it. Nice and easy. But uh, moving into another fortress here, uh, after clouding over 7-4, another long auto-scroller that's underwater, so another really hated stage. Uh, but this one, pretty, pretty straightforward, another stage where uh, you just want to use a P-Wing in order to fly up into the pipe uh, and kill the Boom Boom as fast as possible. All right, so it, we're going to see what's going on here in 7-6. Uh, if our runners have been able to pick up all the P-Wings so far, they'll be able to just fly over the stage like we see Lasso doing. Uh, I'm not sure if any of the runners missed a P-Wing or not, but if they did, they can actually clip through this stage uh, just like they did 7-1. Uh, so we'll see if any of our runners have to go for that. Looks like Mitch also has the P-Wing to fly over. I think they got all the P-Wings. Okay. So no extra clipping shenanigans from anybody here. But now Lasso moving into 7-8. This is another stage that uh, it's kind of like the, the Mario Maker stage of SMB3. There's just enemies spammed everywhere and just random pipes. Uh, we'll see Lasso take a pretty straightforward traditional route uh, through this stage, but the rest of our runners are going to do some, some slightly more interesting things once they get there. So we see Mitch grabbing this star, running across, and he's actually going to go down inside this pipe and pick up a hammer suit. So this is the most important power-up of Mitch Flower Power's career right here. <laughs> he wants to hang on to this hammer suit for the entire rest of the run. Uh, and if he loses it at any time, he basically throws all the time he spent getting this. He basically threw it away. Uh, and we see Hacks are picking up as well. So this, is, this very well could decide the race as, as who's to be able to keep this hammer suit for the rest of it. So moving into 7F2, this is uh, Mitch and Haxor's, both of their favorite levels. And uh, it's pretty crazy that they would pick this because this is a very, very difficult stage. Uh, especially with the hammer suit, there's a lot of really crazy strats that you have to pull off in order to get it. Uh, Mitch able to get through the first room. Haxor pulling off as well. We see Mitch going down to pick up his hammer suit. That is very difficult. Yeah, it's, it, like both of those rooms are very, very tough to pull off. So very nicely done. Now so we, we see Lasso approaching the World Seven airship, and looks like all of our other runners are going to be skipping that. Right. So this is where the routes will start to meet up. Uh, Lasso is going to have to go through this about two minute auto scroller, whereas 
Uh, Mitch is going to go and Haxor and, and Fu, once he gets there, is going to go straight into World 8. Uh, but don't worry, they're skipping the World 7 airship, but we have plenty more auto-scrolling for them. We got uh, two auto-scrollers in a row. So this is a great time to fire off a whole bunch of donations. Take it away. Sky. Possibly three auto-scrollers in a row. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds good. Thank you. We have $25 from Xbox who says, here's another 25 for Mitch getting first try mac and cheese. The Sesame 3 race has been amazing to watch. Much love to Mitch, Fu, Haxor, and Lasso. $25. Oh, nice. nice kill. The Kobe. $25 from Creepin' Shark. Can we get some love for Pooh here? My boy out here racing two games in a row. Shoutouts to Pooh. No shortage of love for Grand Pooh here, here, I assure you. Yeah, big shout outs to Pooh and uh, Mitch. Also, in a little bit, we'll be uh, running Grand Pooh World 2. So, switching between the two mechanics of SMW and SMB3 at a high level, very, very challenging thing for both of them. So, shout outs to both of those guys for pulling this off. We have $1,000 from Dragon Rock. Thank you. Who says, Where's the incentive for Grand Pooh Bear explaining how he came up with that name? <laughs> Glitch Cat knows the story. Glitch Cat go, knows the story. Go I for it. Tell. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you can't just do it. I was like this. Do you seriously know the story? Um, I mean, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> at, this, at this point, I don't. <laughs> All right, fair enough. Maybe a future incentive, perhaps. We have $20 from Josh Berman, who says, SMB3 was the first real video game I ever played. Getting the port package with a silver Game Boy Advance SB at Costco. Always a thrill watching Mitch Flyerpower and others crush this all-time classic. Also, even though Yoshi is the cutest animal ever, he still needs to be killed. Sorry, not sorry. <laughs> also, too, a lot of people may be wondering, there was talk of mac and cheese. Do you want to talk about maybe the story behind 7-1 uh, Clip and why it's called mac and cheese? Okay, uh, so uh, I, I mentioned Cujo IHSV a little earlier. Uh, we were hanging out in his chat uh, one evening, and uh, we kind of thought, you know, we name every chick just like level name and then clip, or level name and jump. And we're like, let's come up with some fun names. Uh, and I just decided then and there, I really, I, I couldn't even tell you why I did, but I decided, I said, all right, first try 7-1 clip, that's mac and cheese. And for some reason, I don't understand, it's actually stuck. Uh, and I think we've we've had some variations on that called Easy Mac and Craft Dinner and all those sorts of things. I don't know why it took off, but it did. Uh, so yeah, that's just a really fun thing. I do want to mention uh, as our runners are starting to get towards the end of the second auto scroller, the Navy in World 8, they're coming up on the hands. Now, if you know Super Mario Bros. Speedrunning, you know what I'm about to talk about. But if you don't, there's something coming up. There's three levels that our runners are going to try to skip over. But unfortunately, there's a 50-50 chance they're going to get grabbed by a hand, get pulled in, and be forced to play the level. So this is a massive source of RNG. We could see a really big shift in who's ahead, who's behind, coming up in this next section. So Mitch will be the first one there. We'll see how he's able to do. We got Pooh swimming under the boats over there? What's going That's on? what it looks like. <laughs> Oh, he gets grabbed by the first hand. Well, the 95% hand. The 95% hand. hand. No, that means Cab was watching. No, we no. know this. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like Haxor got the first hand, too. Yeah. It's crazy. I didn't know they were going to do this run with Ooh, all right. <laughs> Mitch getting out with just the hand. Haxor oh, getting no. grabbed by the second one. This is luckily the shortest hand, but each of these stages costs about 20 seconds, so you can really see a shift between uh, a minute shifting one way or the other between two runners or, or between your PB. Mitch, Haxor calling his shot, <laughs> calling all three right here. There it is. <laughs> the one and eight. Oh, Pooh, meanwhile, just barely getting grabbed by the third one. So now, all of a sudden, Pooh is right behind Haxor. So that's kind of exactly how it shows of how these hands can really have their say in this in this run. Oh no! Oh no! Make sure everybody's console's secured. <laughs> so Pooh taking the death, unfortunately, then getting grabbed by the first hand the next time through. Oh, takes oh, the death. No. This is a very it's very difficult to deal with these stages when you're not in the normal power-up state that you're aware of. 
So meanwhile, Haxor and Mitch have both moved through the fast airships and are on their way, or, or Mitch is on his way into 8-1. This is another very difficult stage. We see Mitch using a star in order to help him build this kind of early P-speed and try to take it through the rest of the, late, uh, the rest of the stage. Uh, and he's coming up on 8-2, which is another very difficult stage, especially with the hammer suit. Poo with his fourth hand, unfortunately, but able to get out. We'll see if he can get by the third one this time. One of these runners has to get no hands, right? I guess it's got to be lost then. <laughs> All right, Pooh made it past the third one, moving into the fast airship. Mitch had a little bit of a close call with the sun there, but able to avoid it and keep that hammer suit. That was some amazing movement. Yeah. Come on, Lasso. <laughs> Meanwhile, yeah, Lasso coming up on the hands. Let's see what happens. Oh, oh. the 95%. <laughs> Haxor with a very smooth 8-1. Mitch making his way through 8 Fortress. He's going to try to hit a P-switch in this next room and use that one P-switch in order to make all the way to the end of the stage. Requires some pretty precise movement. Uh, so we'll see if he can get it. Saves about 15 seconds if he can pull it off. And he's able to do it. He's going to go for an overkill here. He's going to try to kill the Boom Boom with hammers and a jump all at the same time. And oh, unfortunately, uh, doesn't get it. So that would be another instance where uh, Boom Boom would just explode instantly and you'd get the upside down orb instead. Uh, so it saves a little bit of time if you can get it. Unfortunate there for uh, Mitch, he can't pull it off, but uh, is moving into the last auto scroller of the game, the Super Tanks. Uh, and uh, hanging on to that hammer suit. He and Haxor are both hanging on to it, uh, trying to do their best. Meanwhile, Lasso making his way through the fast airship. Who taking a tail into 8-1 and actually using it to grab a Fire Flower. So this is just kind of using those backups. Uh, he knows the Fire Route at this point, so he, he's not quite where he wants to be, but is very comfortable with using all these strats. Who, unfortunate, doesn't get a great jump and takes a hit off the Koopa. Let's we'll see if Haxor can pull off the overkill here. Uh, doesn't get both shots. You need to shoot both hammers, but uh, does still take out the Boom Boom very quick. Hammer kills on Boom Booms are much faster than a fire kill, so that's one of those little time saves you see is, is faster Boom Boom kills. Now, Glib, have we ever seen a hammer kill on Bowser at a GDQ event? I don't know if we have. This might be a first. Would you say it's hammer time? <laughs> It was some mixed reactions on that one. I deserve that. I thought it was, no, I liked it. I thought it was good. Oh, Glib, you're missing the opportunity to plug yourself on the super tank here. This I'll, is I'll get, when Lasso gets there, I will, I will mention it. Because that, that's when the strat will come in. But uh, Mitch about to move into Bowser's castle, but uh, this level is no slouch. Uh, there's definitely tons of opportunities for some, some mishaps. So Mitch has got to still be on his game if he wants to take this hammer suit all the way to Bowser. So Mitch pulling off the easiest clip in the game, one, another one Nintendo Power tells you about. Uh, and he's got one more room here before Bowser. See if he can maintain his P-Speed. Very nice. Now if you blink it, you'll miss it. This hammer kill is very quick. And he's done it. Time's coming up. When he goes in the door, no. time. Nice job. Very nice run by Mitch there. We see Haxler taking a slightly different uh, path through Bowser's Castle. He's going to try to clip up here in order to skip up a uh, past couple of rooms. Does get the clip. Very nice. Meanwhile, we do see Pooh pulling off uh, a strat that I developed. It's about the only thing I've ever contributed to this game is an auto-scroller strat. Uh, but it is, I think the name right now is the world-famous, very nice kill by, by Haxor. The, uh, the world-famous patented Oglib Super Tank strat TM with a vengeance, I think is where we're at with it. Time is coming up for Haxor, though. And time. GG's to Axor. 
Very nice run. So, Pooh just about to wrap up this final auto scroller. Lasso just about to enter it. I think we got time for one donation really quick. All right, sounds good. We have $250 from Redshift who says, will there be puns? We need to make Pooh upset. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, $250 from The Hands, as in The Hands from Mario 3. Here's the promise, 25 for grab. Never expected it to grab Pooh four times. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Pooh's made the clip, going across the old donut planes here, and then he's going to try and maintain this P-Speed. Oh, it doesn't quite end the door, so he'll have a slight back up here. Able to get through it. Now, this, uh, this fire kill here on, on Bowser is a little bit more uh, in-depth than it is with the hammer kill. He's got to shoot 35 fireballs into Bowser's head, and because Bowser has such a weird hitbox, it's actually only at the top of his head. You see those fireballs actually go Ooh. under, but Pooh able to pull off the kill anyways. Very nice. That was scary. That was very, very scary. You should probably go in the door, though. All right, time. <laughs> oh, Lasso pulling off another clip. That clip saves about a second and a half if you do pull it off. So he's got just a couple more rooms before the end of his run. <laughs> oh. He's, I think he's going to go for this clip, which uh, actually does lose time if you get it first try, but, uh, you know. Oh, he gets it. <laughs> So how much time is it? You got a third try. Yeah. <laughs> but this will actually skip that last room, take him straight into a Bowser fight. Also trying to position just right so that Bowser moves just in the right way and gets the fire kill. Showing off Bowser's still active hitbox at the end of the fight. The time is coming up. Time. <laughs> thank you guys so much. What an incredible race. Again, I want to thank all of you out in the audience. Everybody out there at GD who donated to make this run happen. This was an absolute joy to put this on for all of you. Thank you so much. And uh, let's keep going. Let's get it. Let's keep those donations coming in. We're really close to a million dollars. Let's hit it right now tonight. Let's do it, everybody. Thank you guys so much. I didn't hear it work, guys. <laughs> Let's hear it one more time for Mitch Flower Power, your SMB3 All Forts winner! <laughs> Shout outs to the rest of the runners as well. Let's hear it one more time for Graham, Pooh Bear, Lasso, and Haxor as well. Much love, y'all.